Welcome to Ever After, a Once Upon a Time podcast, Season Two, Episode Seven, Child of the Moon. In this episode, Ruby's fear about turning into a wolf is confirmed when she becomes the suspect for a vicious murder. Meanwhile, Leroy finds treasure in Storybrooke Mine. I'm your host, Molly Southgate, and with me is Martha Southgate and Oh Rob Southgate. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. I'm a child of the moon. No, you're not. A man child of the moon. <laughs> man child of the moon. Mm hmm. <laughs> uh huh. So, what'd you think? I loved it as usual. As usual. Mm-hmm. So, this episode was all, well, mostly Ruby. Mm hmm. And we've had a Ruby episode before where we found out about her being a wolf, but this was about her controlling the wolf. This was cool. Mm-hmm. When we got to meet her mom. Yeah. Yeah. Now I did not like her mom. Yeah, your mom doesn't like her mom so because she thinks gonna... her mom ruined X Files. Uh huh. Okay, we were. I wasn't gonna go there. Well, but... you know what? But anyway, Calling she's you gone. Out. Calling one you out episode, like the wolf. one and done. Bye bye. Yep. Um. Yeah. Ruby killed her. Mm-hmm. Any accident. Spoiler. Whatever. <laughs> Spoiler. She killed her mom. She's gone. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't so, like her either. So what was your favorite part of this episode, Mo? I liked all of it. Well, is there one part that stood out to you? A favorite line? or? Oh, I loved it when they were in the thing. I thought that was cool when they were in the dream. Yeah. Oh, and in Henry's bur- dream? And Henry really Should we ta- let's him? talk about that then. Okay, so what happens is Henry is afraid. He's drinking coffee <laughs> because he's afraid to go to sleep. And David says, I'll be sleeping in the next uh-huh. room. You'll be fine. Uh-huh. And David is like... Are you drinking coffee or ten? Yeah. Do you want some coffee, Mel? Oh. That so, would be a no. <laughs> excuse me while I go throw up in the next room. Ew. <laughs> so Henry does have the dream again, and he dreams that he's in a fire. Well, and did we get to see the dream in the last episode? No. When they talked about it? Because no. I don't remember. This was really cool. You saw the room on fire. This is the first time you saw the dream. Yeah. Henry was in a disco inferno is what with, it looked like to me. With Princess Aurora. And when he wakes up, Regina's the one who was there instead of David, and she said uh-huh. David got called out on a call right. for police business. Right. So she now, was watching him. In the past, we wouldn't have believed her. But I believed her but this I time. believed her. Yeah, and he, she, was really, she was being very motherly. He actually had a, a burn. burn. Yes. I think it was transporting him there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now everybody so, just has to sleep with Henry and be portal there. That's a really good idea. <laughs> how are they going to, what, they all kind of fall asleep holding hands? Yeah. And then they end up in a fire they don't know how to get out of. Ah, I'm on fire. Why did you do this to us, Henry? But it's like, an interesting, eh. no, but it shows you that maybe they can go in through a dream. Right. Yeah. Maybe that's that an interesting is theory. a portal because uh-huh. that's what this one really came down to was the portal, now, they don't know how they're going to do it because the Mad Hatter's hat is burned off. Because the mm-hmm. king burned it to try and get back at Prince Charles. King Prince Charles. Charles. You called him. Prince Charming. Right. Prince Charles. <laughs> <laughs> of England. He was trying to get He's very mad at the prince. Oh, mad at so, the prince. What kind of accent? That was my Prince Charles. Hello. More he tea, doesn't mother. Anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm now I'm off. Oh, start that king in the face. So Regina calls Mr. Gold to come over to Mary Margaret's mm-hmm. house because of the burn, right? Uh-huh. And he and she says you've got to fix this. And mm-hmm. what? Well, and they're talking about the curse and how this is a byproduct of the mm-hmm. curse. And she says, "Well, I didn't expect people to wake up from the curse." Right. So in other words, uh, Gold, you screwed up. Right. But he's saying, look, this is what happens. Some people get stuck in between. So Henry is kind of crossing between the two worlds. And he tells Henry once you... So is Aurora. And Aurora is too, right. He he tells Henry once you control the journey, the fear will stop. Right. So he gives him power over the dream so that when he's in the dream, Mm -hmm. he can control his actions. Mm -hmm. Right. And then he doesn't have to fear it anymore. That's like Nightmare on Elm Street 4, the dream warrior, because that's what they do is they go into their dream and they control it. Molly, you're not seeing that movie. You're not seeing that movie. Cut it out. He also gives Henry... <laughs> I'm going to talk about the, the Wait, show. Wait, I want to talk about one yeah. other thing there. 
I just realized, not about Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, no. Okay. We'll talk about that. Welcome to the Nightmare on Elm no, Street podcast no, no, with Molly no, no. and Martha. I don't know what you're talking about. No, no. Um, Gold's advice to Henry, he showed him how to control it. It's the same thing that was paralleling with uh, with Red, yes. was learning how to control the wolf. Yes. Mm-hmm. So once she controlled it, her nightmare was over just as Henry's is over. And it, it looked like... I think I needed an nap after all that thinking. It looked like Red's mom... Was wearing the same, yeah. the same necklace type of necklace that Henry yeah. got from mm-hmm. from Mr. Gold. So I kept yelling, "Take the necklace! Take the necklace off of her!" But she didn't. She took door number two. Yeah, but um, Henry and Aurora then meet in the dream, and he talks to her, and she wakes up and she tells Emma and Snow, and she said, "He said his name is Henry." Yes, oh! and, and Emma and Snow are looking like. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, how's yeah. Henry talking to her in a dream? So, okay, favorite. I bet now they just want to go to sleep with Aurora. <laughs> They're so all they gonna hold Henry. Henry. Hi, Henry. So, one of my favorite. The building's on fire. If you didn't notice, <laughs> one of my favorite Disney characters came alive in this show today. Who? Billy is. We find out is <laughs> Gus Gus. Yes. From Cinderella. Yeah, I, but he died. Like, well, and he wasn't fat and cute. I was expecting him to look a little bit more like Gus Gus. But yeah. He, but it was all right. Like if was, Danny DeVito had played him. Oh, gross. <laughs> hey, I'm Gus Gus. No. He's but Danny DeVito. I'll show you later. An it's actor. a actor. Well, weird. you know him. You've seen him in lots of different things. In what? He was the penguin in Batman. You didn't see that one. He was. He's on Always Sunny. You didn't see that one. He's on Taxi. You didn't see that one. I know who he is. Yeah. Matilda's father. Yeah. That's not Gus. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it took a while, but you finally got my joke. <laughs> so, in right in the beginning, Grumpy was determined to keep working until he found the fairy dust, and he did. He broke through a hole. It created a found a, a door. Oh well, yeah, he broke through the wall in the diamond mine, and there were all the diamonds that they grind down to make fairy Ma- dust. Oh, favorite line yes. when 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 um, the one dwarf said, hey, "Everybody, it's happy hour." Yeah, and and, and they're all going and then happy was going over, and Grumpy said, "Just because it's called happy hour doesn't mean you have to be there happy." Exactly. <laughs> so, what about Dopey? Was there Dopey hour? Does he have to go to that? So here they were celebrating because now by the next day they're going to have the fairy dust mm-hmm. and they have the hat. And then the, the big bad king burnt the hat. Yes. So now they got to start so, over trying to figure out how to get how to use the fairy dust to get there. The end of last episode, we saw King George watching them. And we didn't know what. We knew he was going to cause trouble. But this episode is the one about King George. Uh-huh. So he's the one, as it goes on. Well, let, let's let's tie that all together. So the whole episode... You've got Ruby afraid she's going to turn because she doesn't have her cloak, mm-hmm. and she gets locked up and in the in the freezer, and she gets out, rips through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the claw marks and the metal uh-huh. that was awesome. Right, but and then, wait, wait, wait! Yeah. Did you when David's like nobody's going to believe that, and Green said, "Right, nobody's going to believe I've got, I've got freezer, I've got freezer." Oh, lasagna! I've my fr- freezer. Well, lasagna's frozen. Uh, and he's like, oh, that my lasagna is frozen. Yeah. And he's like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what what ends up happening is she's freaked out because she did turn to the wolf, mm-hmm. and then they find, as you said, Gus Gus has been killed. Mm-hmm. Okay, Billy the Gus. Mm-hmm. Billy the Gus. Billy the Gus. And Red, of course, thinks it's her. But he wasn't and- just killed; he was torn in half. He was torn in half, and his. His upper body was under this this yes. thing, and his legs were sticking out of the other thing, right. out of the bin. Did you notice that, Molly? He was I actually, closed my eyes. Well, yeah. that's, that's That's a wise choice. Allow me to paint the visual for you. But now he's Gus, and then over there, Gus. is the other Gus. Yeah. Uh-huh. Gus, Gus. Yes. So, so Sebastian, or King George, isn't he Sebastian? Yeah, no, Spencer. Spencer's his name there. Okay. Sebastian, Spencer, we don't know. Somebody. No, it's Spencer. <laughs> he, King George or Spencer. He goes on, he starts saying, Ruby's got to be stopped, and he's turning, he tries to turn everybody against David. He creates because an da- angry mob. David's c- 
trying to like protect Ruby. Like a Frankenstein Ruby. now. Mom, yes! Fire torches! Pitchforks and yeah. fire! And, and uh, David figures out, David and Granny figure out that George, King George, is the one that killed Gus. And stole the cloak. And that's where this gets really important, because when they go to confront him, what do they find out? What What was he really doing the whole time? The whole time, King George had killed Gus Gus. Right. So he killed Gus but Gus. But why? But why? Who was he trying to get at? He wasn't trying to get at Ruby, even though the whole episode we thought that's what it was. What was he really doing? He was trying to get at um, David. Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, he was trying to, he had the hat. He wanted to He hurt stole David. the hat and he said, you, I, I brought you here. I didn't bring you here to kill Red. I brought you here for something else. So to see the look on your face when the portal is destroyed and he threw the hat in the fire. Well, and, and he has another line. I, I, in the beginning of the episode, I, I liked this one when he, he's talking to Prince Charming and he says, in this world, we get in, he said, you may have killed me in the last world. Or no, he said, I told you you should have killed me in yeah, the last yeah. world. He said that a couple of but times. But he here. says, in this world, we get another go at each other. Yeah. And I thought, ooh, this is going to be bad. But he he vows to destroy Prince Charming's life. Right. And so here's where But he's he doing it. more than that. He's destroying everyone's life because yeah. he's, he's ruining the portal. And he says, Emma and Snow are never coming through again. But we don't believe that. No. Well, because what happens at the end with Ruby? She... she talks to David and says, you're going to find a way, right? Uh-huh. And Molly, you may have found the way. You're so tricky. It might be through Henry's dream. So, yeah, so they all hold hands, and then they go maybe, into the room. Henry, why did you get us in a burning fire room? <laughs> right. Well, I was just thinking, maybe it's not even that as much as maybe they can communicate right. with them through there and tell them how to open the portal on that side. Right. Could be. Because if they open the portal on that side, they can get over. So one of the things that I thought was really cool was when the the one werewolf, Quinn, found, yes. found Red and took her down into the sunken castle. Yes. I thought uh-huh. that was really neat. And the, how the, all the, the other castle. wolves were down there. Yeah. And, and uh, I also liked And when, their eyes were turning yellow. Yeah. Back to normal. Yellow back to normal. Yes. That was just creepy. And I like when, when Snow White came down there, and she says, who are these people? And they say, we're her pack. Mm-hmm. Very wolfy. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the, my other favorite moment was when Granny has her crossbow. <laughs> this is great. And she okay. shoots at, you know, towards king, the king, and she says, the next one goes between your eyes. Yeah. 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 So I liked that one. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that. About wraps it up. Ruby at the end, I, I did like when she, um, she said to David, I, I'm gonna go do something I haven't been able to do in a while. I have a few more hours yet of the moonlight. I'm yes. gonna go have, I'm gonna go run. Well, and, uh-huh. and you know, now she can control. I was it. gonna say, that was, that was a big point. When she met up with her mom and with the other wolves, the big deal was that they trained her on how to control it. Do you remember how, what they told her to do? They told her to just be, feel the wolf. Right. Not, don't don't get scared of it. Uh-huh. Understand that you are the wolf. Right. Mm-hmm. And they said that, that when they first turn, they get, and, and they start to feel the wolf take over, they get scared, and then that's when they black out, and that's when bad things happen. And they said, get through that. And they showed her as the wolf running with the pack, and then she looked down in the water and was looking at herself as the wolf, and then you saw her run off. That was the moment when she got control. Mm-hmm. So that was... Super cool. I also like when when Quinn was holding the cloak and was going to burn it, he was showing her, like, he was trying to show, like, I'm going to burn this. She moved so fast when she ran at him and knocked him down and, like, threw him over and took the cloak. It's like, wow. Mm-hmm. The wolf was coming out right there, even though it was during the day. Yeah, I think they can have the wolf come on. At the day, if they control, if they can, they can make it happen during the day. Right. Because that's well, maybe, what you Maybe saw. not so much the that's wolf. That's why she wanted to run. Right. Well, I was going to say it's maybe and not like, so much that the wolf can come out during the day, but they can control some of the powers. Like mm-hmm. Granny. They she, can harness the powers. Yeah. Because Granny was able to she can still use smell. the sense of smell and all that. So I think and they And hearing, just, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's wrap it up. Okay. okay. Well, that's it. Thank you for listening, everybody. 
Uh, this was a really short one, but that's because we're excited to get on to the next episode. Well, and, and this one, it, it had only a couple storylines, but they wrapped up in just... Yeah, it was really condensed. Yeah. Uh, but we will uh, we will definitely be jumping right into the next episode. I'm so excited to see what happens next. Uh, you can find past episodes of this and all of our other podcasts, including Once Upon a Time in Wonderland, ever after Once Upon a Time in Wonderland, at our website, which is www.southgatemediagroup.com You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at our Southgate. Martha tweets from... At SMG Pods. Yep. Uh, we're on Tumblr. We're on... And just look up Southgate Media Group. We're on Facebook. Definitely get on our Facebook page. Uh, just look up Ever After Once Upon a Time po- podcast on Facebook. Uh, that's one area where we haven't had a lot of interaction. And I think it would be really fun to get some... Uh, Get some people talking on there and get some communication going. Uh, Twitter seems to be where, where most of our communication is, and we'd like to get a little bit more on Facebook. Uh, find us on iTunes. Rate us. Review us. It helps others find the show when you do. And uh, definitely go to Stitcher or Podbean or Intune Radio. Any place you get your podcast, please subscribe. And if you have the opportunity to review us, please do. Let's end this the way every great fairy tale ends. Happily ever after. The end! If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. (laughs) Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world.